The best fights on paternity court. So, you were with somebody else, yeah, man, then you got low sex. I thought you were not talking. What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Miss Wa yeah. Mr. Wallace, you sitting up here, you taking hugs Come that. On. Number one, this young woman named Miss Austin was in paternity court for the third time, asking the same question. Miss Austin, this is your third time here in our courtroom with Mr. Wallace and Miss Robert. Previously, you were here because Mr. Wallace questioned the paternity of your other child, but now you find yourself in the same situation. Today, you say you need to prove to Mr. Wallace that he is the father of your nine-month-old son, Ronnell. Mr. Wallace, on the other hand, was persistent that he did not father the nine-month-old Ronald. You claim you have multiple reasons to doubt when it comes to whether or not you are the biological father of this child and hope today is your last visit to this courtroom. To give the audience deeper insight into what had been going on between both sides, Judge Lauren showed the viewers a glimpse of the last time the couple was in the courtroom. What happened the last time you all were here? I thought Ryan got his stuff together. In addition, you have another child with Ms. Austin. The kids, I love my kids dearly, but I shouldn't have You just married. don't love their mothers. Correct. A.B., Danielle, Mr. Wallace, you are the father. After the whole recollection of events, the paternity judge shared her disappointment about the awkward situation like this. You were standing on the defendant's side with Ronyel, yes, Mr. Wallace. So now, Mr. Wallace, you back with Miss Robert. Yes, ma'am. But you still going back and forth between the two women because she's pregnant now and the baby could potentially be yours? Yes. After her spiel, the judge asked Ronald's mother to tell her side of the story. Since the last time you all were here. Since the last time we was here, everything started out okay, but we all know that wasn't gonna last long. Ryan Wallace was still bouncing back from me and Kendrillin. I had enrolled in school, but I never did go because I had got pregnant once again with Ronnell, and she got pregnant with her baby, with her son. Lauren then went on to ask Mr. Wallace why he doesn't want to accept his responsibility as a father. Mr. Wallace, as to whether or not her child is your child, if you've been having babies with both of these women back and forth all this time. Because she's very promiscuous. Uh, when we was together, I had a firewall on her phone. They would duplicate her text messages and call log and send a copy to my email. Mr. Wallace's accusation led to a wrangle in the courtroom like this. Cause you lay down with everybody who you talk to. Cause that's what you do. You and the Lord know you a slut. That's no, like you're hold on, hold on, hold on. You're hold on, a hold slut. On. So you believe she was sleeping around? If I'm dead, so why you keep on sleeping with me? My Why? I'm pregnant again! Why? Easy access. So after some back and forth, shoving of evidence, and a lot of crying and drama, the results were put out. In the case of Austin versus Wallace, pertaining to nine-month-old Ronnell Wallace, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Wallace, you are Ronnell's father. Stop it! Ms. Wa Mr. Wallace! You sitting up here, you taking hugs Come that! Come on! You, like, you ain't even let me get dirty! Stand up! Jerome, just give him a minute. Give him a minute. Oh. Number two, Miss Williams was in court today, along with her two sisters, for her paternity fight because of her promiscuous mother. You are here today with your two sisters because you say you're tired of being lied to by your mother, Ms. Liddell. You all claim she wasn't a good mother and say her promiscuous behavior is the reason you need the results of a paternity test today. When the judge asked Miss Williams why she felt the need to investigate her paternity, the young woman said this. I was always the outcast of me and my two sisters because, you know, being the baby, I'm young. And I felt like ever since I was born, I've been locked. And you always felt left out. But Miss Liddell interpreted the conversation in this way. Oh, there was never a paternity test, so I don't know where to get in from. One thing I tell you about uh, my three daughters, they are manipulated. Judge Lauren allowed the other Williams sister to speak after listening to their mother. I, as growing up, um, family members would say, no, he's not your father. It was a, a rumor going around that. Who is that? James. The man who's going to appear in court today and has been tested. Yes. All right. And the revival of the backstory resulted in this screaming competition. No, no, you didn't! What did not y'all allow me when I can do something for y'all? Then y'all always, no, then y'all say me in the back. Ladies, let's get some order, ladies. Ladies, ladies, ladies.
Ladies. After this, Miss Liddell was asked if she had any idea who the sister's father was, but unfortunately, she had no idea. Gentlemen, do you know who her father? I don't know. I don't. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna be honest. Jamie, no. Lisa, no. Jasmine, no. I don't. I'm not for sure if James is their father. If he's not their father. Even Mr. James, the girl's alleged father, had reservations about their paternity. You are these young girl's biological father. Do you believe that? No, I do not. You don't uh, act like it, so it shouldn't be hurting no. you. He said no. You don't act like it. You show. Sure. No. And when the test came in. It proved that only one of the sisters was actually like William, and this left the other sisters broken. When it comes to Miss Jasmine Williams, Mr. Williams, you are her father. When it comes to Miss Lisa Williams, Mr. Williams, you are not her father. When it comes to Miss Jamie Williams, you are not her father. Three years, Pat. Three, 23 years. Why you couldn't tell me? Why? How can I tell you something that I didn't you know myself? I, I did not know if he was with me. I asked you before. And before I kept telling you, you that I he was. don't know. Yeah, we was young. Why you didn't say I could be a person at 18 years old? Oh, no, he's not your daddy. I was a slut on the street. No. Yes. No. Honesty. Pat, honesty. I didn't know nothing about honesty then. Number three. Lisa McBirth petitioned for a paternity case because she believed that young Elijah was not her grandson. Birth, you petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove your son, Kakitho Hughes, is not the father of Miss Jackson's two-year-old son. Whereas Miss Jackson claimed that her ex-boyfriend was being poisoned by her mother regarding parenting her son. You say Miss McBirth has been poisoning her son by convincing him he's not the biological father of your child. You claim the timing does add up and today's paternity test will prove you right. The proceedings began with Miss McBirth's concerns about paternity. This woman is trouble. She is trouble with a capital T. She as a matter of fact, I call her the three T's. Trash, trouble, and trifling. That's what she is. The little boy looks nothing like my son any, or any member of my family at all. Even though Miss Jackson believed that she was an important part of Mr. Hugh's life, his family begged to differ. Obviously, you have a different opinion. So why do you think she's in so much doubt? I have no idea, to be honest. Like, maybe because he is so white? Because he's all the white white. He ain't got no black I, in here. Uh, everything I see got mm -hmm. uh, powder puff on it. I don't see no chocolate nowhere, okay? No, ma'am. Whatever. How long have you been in a relationship? 15, 18 months. They even admitted to the judge that they were never persuaded by Miss Jackson's lies. I seen him at the doctor's office while I was taking his real children to the doctor and it was a newborn and I walked past them and I kind of looked glanced over there and I seen this little white baby I knew it wasn't mine and I ain't had nothing else to say or do about it since then judge Lauren pointed out that mr. Hughes was equally guilty but big mama didn't take it well I know exactly what type of person is he just as trifling as she is he's a handsome guy he's my son <laughs> and I know what he do but he still no matter what he do he's still gonna be my son after asking the alleged father about paternity and analyzing the evidence a verbal brawl got loose, pushing the judge to the edge of voicing the reason in her courtroom. My father's a brown hair, blue eyed dude, so. <laughs> How you know? He just, just gonna say that because, eyes. you know, she gonna freak him after this. Yeah, he has no features of nobody in Jerome, my family. Jerome, pass me, Miss McBurt's there, evidence. There's, there's no features. But now, it was time for results, and it left the delusional grandmother in pieces. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics. In the case of McBurt Terrell v. Jackson, pertaining to two-year-old Elijah, Mr. Hughes, you are Elijah's father. No! No! That's a lie! That's a lie! That's that a lie! Is a lie. That's a lie! That's not true! You are lying, Trick! Hey, what did hey, you do? Hey, hey, hey. What did you do? Hey, hey, hey. Get rid of Satan! Get rid of Satan! I know that's a damn lie! I know that's a damn lie! Number four. This next case is about babies having babies and grandmothers fighting over paternity claims. Miss Sism, you and your teenage daughter, Destiny, are here to prove that Anthony Taylor is the father of your daughter's eight-month-old son, Osiris. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Riley, you stand before me claiming that you are 100% positive your son is not the child's father. Yes, Your Honor. The case started with both grandmothers heating up the courtroom. I have a 14-year-old daughter at home. Sneaking over there, hollering about she was coming over there to see my daughter. That's a lie, Your Honor. My son was going to see How are you going to tell me it was a lie? Because, you Your Honor, Honor you didn't they even was having sex in her you house. You didn't even care where your daughter was What type of parent is she? You she going to tell them. Your daughter was she told you them. She told Hold them. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's get some more. 
but Judge Lauren was not up for any of that nonsense and just wanted to get to the bottom of the case at hand. If this child is really your grandchild, because I know you want to know that. Yes, ma'am. Miss Riley told the judge that she had seen Destiny with someone else. I see her walking with another guy. My son at school, this is before Destiny would say anything about you was pregnant. Next thing you know, I find out she old. My son come telling me that she told him that she pregnant. How is that? You, you so just came around two, uh, two weeks ago? And he was messing with another girl at the time. But Sissom was persistent that it was her daughter that was the victim. Oh, excuse me, Your Honor. She has Osiris to take care of. So she cannot do that now. Basically, right up under your nose, they plotted this plot, pulled it off, and now we're all here. Yeah. And sometimes right. that's what kids do. And I'm gonna keep it real. With all the phone, where's the number? I'm calling. Yes, I, I want, do. Yes, I'm telling you this. Yes, no, I'm, I'm telling you this. One. And after this, hell broke loose in the courtroom. To the house, Peter. Don't say you didn't. Wait a minute. Did they you escorted you out. Me and Destiny for. had her. I went out of the house. By security. Being born. We and sure did. Finally, after all that drama, it was time for the results. In the case of Sism versus Riley Taylor, when it comes to eight-month-old Osiris Taylor, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Taylor, you are his father. Yeah! 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 I ain't gonna get to see him now. Now I told you. Care of Number five. Next on the list is the dramatic Baker versus Woods case, which was brought by an Atlanta man who didn't know if he or his ex best friend was the father of a two year old girl. Now, you say when you met Miss Woods, you thought you had found the woman of your dreams and were thrilled to find out you were having your first child with her. Her personality, mm -hmm. I really was intrigued by her energy, like the life of the party, but her mind is what captured my heart. But after finding out all the stuff that she did, I look at her like a dirty dish rag trying to clean. Mr. Baker revealed that he doesn't want someone like Janine in his life, referring to the two-year-old Trinity being his daughter. That's why we're here. You said you're not on the birth certificate. Was that because you were doubting paternity? She told me after I confronted her that she did sleep with Jimmy. And we both slept with her like a day apart around the conception time. Okay. Things escalated in minutes when Jimmy Dudley, the best friend who slept with Mr. Baker's girlfriend, came into the court and said this. Ms. Woods has admitted that she slept with your ex-best friend, Mr. Baker, as well as yourself, and now she doesn't truly know who Trinity's father is. Jimmy Dudley, the best friend, claimed that he did all this to expose the toxic nature of Janine Woods, the mother. The following emotional outburst was inevitable. But I didn't, I didn't want to, it, it wasn't like that. It was just like, we just, it just kind of, it kind of happened, but I really want to expose it pretty much so, yes. How you gonna expose me? You ain't wanna expose me, baby. You wanna sleep with me like everybody else. I mean, you were looking yeah. good that night, you know yeah, what I'm saying? I you look I nice was. and it Finally, it was time for the results. Mr. Dudley, you are not her father. Ooh, chew on that. Mr. Baker, you are not <laughs> her father. Life lesson, another one. I'm sorry. Living you learn. I wish you the best. 